Five Mistakes to Avoid When Hosting a Virtual Summit In this presentation, I'm going to teach you five mistakes common to virtual summit and how to avoid them. I need to mention that it takes a lot of hard work and effort to host a virtual summit. There are lots of things you need to put in place and organize. It is apparent you want the event to be a massive success, and you want your audience to have an enjoyable experience as well as create value for themselves. At least that's the whole point of a virtual summit. As much as you'll be dwelling on all it takes to achieve a hugely successful virtual summit, you must dwell on mistakes you need to avoid. These mistakes can make your virtual summit flop. Not to worry, I'll highlight them for you. Just pay attention. Mistake number one. Avoid last-minute preparations. Timing is essential, and it applies to the virtual summit too. You need ample time to prepare your summit. There are various things to put in place and considerations to make. Organizing everything a week or two before your summit might be inimical. The recommendation is for you to start preparing for your summit two to three months before the D-Day. This way, you have enough room to fix everything that might skip your attention or tackle problems that might arise during preparation. For the actual setup, you can do this a week before the summit. You'll feel at ease with yourself when you've organized ahead of the summit. More so, your partners will have enough time on their hands to prepping. Mistake number two. Never select sponsors that offer the same types of products or services. One of the best things that can happen to your virtual summit is finding numerous sponsors. You'll make enough revenue and you won't run out of products and services to offer to your audience. On the other hand, it can be the worst thing too, especially when you select sponsors that offer similar products and services. It only means that your virtual summit will end up as a battlefield for competitors. You should avoid sponsors who are pitted against each other. Instead, you should select brands that complement each other. Think of your current sponsors and their offerings. Since you have a message you want to get across, select sponsors that resonate with such a message and do not antagonize each other. Mistake number three, not selecting the right platform. This is a common mistake that happens to many people hosting virtual summits. There are lots of online platforms that you can use to organize your virtual summits. However, not every platform is suitable for your platform. Worse still, it's difficult selecting the right one. To make the right selection, create a list of what you expect from a platform. The list contains every tool that would give you a seamless summit experience. Avoid opting for the cheapest platform or the one you see first. The perfect application for you will provide the essential support you need from the beginning of the summit to the end. Features like tracking tools will provide insights on what participants are up to. Mistake number four. Avoid organizing lengthy sessions. Engaging conversations are nice. It's the best way to get an audience hooked. However, no matter how appealing a session is, you should not ignore the fact that the average human attention shortens every second. If you want to ensure that your participants enjoy and pay keen attention to sessions, you can limit your sessions to a maximum of 20 minutes each. On average, participants pay rapt attention to sessions between 10 and 20 minutes. The general worry is that 20 minutes might not be enough to convey enough information. You can include resources that participants can read later on. Mistake number five, avoid making unwelcome pitches. A virtual summit is one of the most effective ways to gain the attention of many. In situations like this, people often use it as an opportunity to pitch their products and services. If you do this, you might discourage many of the participants from continuing with your interactive sessions. People sign up for virtual meetings because they want to add more value to themselves. A sales pitch focuses more on you than your audience. It doesn't mean you shouldn't pitch at all. You can do it at the end of your sessions. As long as your sessions are engaging enough to make people stay till the end, they won't miss out on your pitch. So there you have it. Those are the five mistakes to avoid when hosting a virtual summit.